my first question is, who actually makes the wrong turn? <laughs> For me, I think the wrong turn of this film is more about choices and the choices that Danny makes, or you know, he kind of. Rightly or, rightly or wrongly, wrongly chooses family, so that's for me, but the wrong term. Aquila and Sadie, I can't imagine you had that much time to coordinate that fight scene you have together at the end. Uh, <laughs> how did you put that together with the director, and how did, uh, how did you like fighting each other? <laughs> I'll talk about this, I love the fight scene, it's one of my favorites. Um, our director, Val, has this amazing Bulgarian accent, so it was really hard to understand what he was saying all the time. He was like, so we have your stunt doubles, and we all look over like simultaneously to the left, and there are these two really handsome guys in blonde wigs. And so we started laughing, and we were both like, well, why don't we try it and see if it works, it'll work, and if not, then, you know, we'll let them do their thing. And thankfully, we got to do most of it. I wish that it would, you could see the whole, like, extent of what we went and did, because obviously it gets chopped up a lot. But, I, um, I knew, okay, now I'm chiming in. This is what we do, by the way. Um, <laughs> the fight is much longer, but of course, we didn't get to see all of it, but, which would have been fun, but Aquila and I were like hell bent on like doing the fight herself, and Aquila is a super great dancer, so I just let her fling me around. <laughs> and then to credit, like, damn, I'm good, right? And, um, yeah, it, it was really fun. I wish, I don't, it went by really fast, the fun, right? I know, it always goes by. It, it, it always goes by really fast, but yeah, it, it was basically us. Yeah, all in all, it was really fun because we got to kind of just play with it, and the stunt choreographer let us kind of have freedom as soon as he realized we weren't complete fools about it, so. <laughs> well, I wasn't fool. I was choking on the dry ice. That was supposed to be like, I kept choking on like, I guess you can't inhale dry ice. No, you can like, you can pretty much die. Yeah, so I was die for wrong turn. <laughs> Claude, did you inherit any themes from the previous long turn movies, or were you able to do your start from scratch? I was lucky enough to, to score three, four, five, and now six, um, so I was able to borrow from myself a little bit. But for me, the strongest element was the, was the, the, the familial element, which of course is what makes Danny, um, you know, go to the dark side, if you will, and that's why I really enjoyed bringing in some indigenous uh, Appalachian instruments like fiddle and, and some guitar to, uh, because that, that Appalachian music is very deeply rooted in family and, and tradition, so uh, that was the reasoning why I, I chose that kind of instrumentation, and uh, I want to thank Tomas Gallegos, my assistant, for the incredible job he did, and so that's about it. <laughs> Spoiler alert, but why did you decide to kill the final girl? Well, Danny kind of has to make a clean break of it, I think. And unfortunately, uh, his heart is the one that has to go. And I think that Tony's his heart, so that has to go if he's going to go fully to the dark side. All the good guys kind of die. Well, yeah, you know, I, 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 I think so. I, I, I wanted to keep something alive at the end, too. I mean, I think we, the film's are going to have any place to go, especially if we're going to be working with some of the characters again. I think we'll be a good place to have somebody, somebody still alive afterwards. So. Quila, when you read the script, were you surprised when it got to that point? I uh, surprised, uh, maybe not surprised, um, excited because the end was such a big scene and that was such a big day for us on set. And um, Anthony did an amazing job. Sadie did, I mean, just an incredible job. The scene with her and I and the gun and stuff. So when it came to the death scene, I was actually excited to die because I hadn't died on film yet. So <laughs> it was a big climactic moment for me, I guess. Selfishly, I was selfish. But. And any of you speak about the hotel and uh, maybe for the cast, what it was like to film there? Yeah, I think the cast can give you a lot more of an idea of what it was like to film there. But uh, the hotel was. Uh, we inherited the hotel when they came to talk to me about writing the script, so we knew that it was going to be centered around that location. And it's all Bulgarian, and the, the charms of Bulgarian. It was actually military base housing, that, or school, excuse me. So that's why it was so like elegant and extravagant. But it was originally built, so you were saying, in 1906, I think. But absolutely gorgeous. It was even more beautiful in person, so they did 
it amazing justice in the film, but it was it was really extravagant. We got there, and all of us, I mean, like, in the car, we're just like, oh, wow, it's so big, obviously, for script, but, like, in person, we were all like, oh, my God. <laughs> and it's, it's actually still was being used. Yeah. So, like, when we were shooting, they were still, like, military members using it on the other side, which was really scary because you would like be wrapping for the night and then you'd have to walk down like long corridors with like a mirror on the other side. It was super, super creepy freaky. <laughs> yes, you sir, in black. Uh, firstly, I think it's a fantastic piece that you guys have made. I've never seen a horror movie shot so well, right. but I wanted to know what did you guys shoot on, and uh, how many days did you shoot this thing? The director's not here with us tonight, no, but can any of you speak to the, the camera they used in? I've certainly how long the shoot was. Right. I'm fairly sure they used a red. Uh, they, used, they shot on red. I know that's the, with the producers, uh, Jeff and uh, Phil, they tend to shoot most of their productions with red. Um, but and how many days of shooting was it? We were on, all in all, we were on, it was almost 24 days. So 20. with travel. Okay, 24 so. days with travel. Yeah. Wow. So it was really fast. Yeah, that sounds good. Really fast. fast. Am I giving away like a golden secret to say Valeria no, edited it in two weeks? Was really? the first director's cut? And yeah. then they did another cut that obviously Fox did another cut that was longer, but... He said he did not sleep for two weeks. <laughs> Literally. Sure yeah. yeah. And, and uh, did you guys get any storyboards when you were reading the script? Or was it like you just had to go and shoot? That, yeah, that thing. There was no rehearsals? <laughs> but you guys did fantastic job. No, but everybody from the UK had just, had literally just a theater on the West End, um, had just come out of theater school, but it was their, a lot of them besides Roxanne, it was their very first movie. Um, but they were very well trained. They had just come from theater, like intense theater school. Um, and everyone was really, really committed to doing the film. So like, I mean, sometimes when you do a horror film, uh, you have actors who are like, don't want to talk about it and don't want to talk about process. Everybody wanted to talk a lot about process and backstory. Chris Jarvis, um, who played, you know, my brother, uh, was very, very intense. It was like this great family and very humble and just, I mean, <laughs> everything was talked to death about walking in the room. And do you think when I walk in the room, I would be like holding a marble in my hand? Or you, do you think I would be thinking this if we would go like, I don't know, just walk in the damn room, <laughs> you know? But everyone cared a lot about it. And, and in a way, everyone like respected the fact that they were like, let's not fuck up wrong turn six. Like, like <laughs> We cared about it a lot, you know, which was so fun. And then we were in Bulgaria, so we all felt we were in like Wizard of Oz, and that was so awesome. And, and you know, UFO, we, we got to stay at like this great, beautiful hotel, and then we drank wine at night, so. No more secrets, no, no more secrets. secrets. No. That's it. And that's where the secrets are. <laughs> Don't give Sadie the mic. Uh, I'm asking this because you guys shot the movie so brilliantly. The one thing that I, I was like really trying to understand, why you didn't get your poster much more on a bigger scale? I, I felt that you guys underplayed the poster. Mm -hmm. I um, view that's not not, our, not my department necessarily. Yeah, I think that's probably a uh, Fox marketing sorry. question. But, but I, it's I'll the sixth you. one, so I think they've got a good formula going here. I, I, if you're really happy with the look of the film, be sure to flood Valeri's Facebook page because the, it's unfortunately he can't be here, and this film looks great because of him. I mean, definitely. I see a question in the back. Aquila, you obviously had a really emotional scene. What did you do to prepare for that, and how many takes did uh, did you have to get that just right? How did you prepare and how many takes did you have for your big emotional scene? I know we've never met before, but um, <laughs> <laughs> to give you a little backstory, when I was in college, I had this roommate named Shauna, and she would constantly make me cry, so I would just think about Shauna. I'm kidding. That's Shauna, everybody. Um, honestly, kind of like Sadie was touching on, the cast that we were working with, everybody was, I mean, even though they might have been like, 
green in an industry sense, and I don't even like saying that because I don't, I don't feel like it's even suited. We had the freedom, thankfully, and the time on the really emotional scenes for me, like especially towards the end, um, to where we could just play in the scene together. So before that one, that was by far my like the height of my emotion, like need, I guess you could say. Um, I went to Sadie beforehand, and we were both kind of in our element and doing whatever we needed to do to prep. And we're in like being in the environment was fantastic. A because it was beautiful, but it was also incredibly cold and incredibly scary just on its own. So her and I had a chance to talk over it and I told her what, what I wanted in the scene and where I wanted to go and kind of, I think we gave each other the freedom and I asked you, like I'm like asking you to do whatever you need to do to actually scare me. Not in just a sense of like, oh my God, you're sleeping with my boyfriend, but on a level of like, this is a life and death situation, like I just lost ones that I loved and, and that is not just scary, but it's, it's devastating. So, um, did I answer the question? How many takes? Oh, how many takes? Oh, that was, um, sometimes we'd get lucky, like with Sadie and I, because Sadie is really experienced and so talented at what she does, we had the time to go through the scene fairly quickly, so we got, oh my god, I, I mean, yeah, I guess you can say that, I think we each probably have three or four takes on our close-ups. So, in retrospect, it doesn't sound like a ton, but on the day, if you do the wide shot, and then you punch in, and then you punch in, you feel like you're really warmed up by the last time, by the third or fourth time, at least I feel like we did. On a couple of the other ones, though, Val would come up and, um, in his amazing way, and he was so wonderful to work with. He'd be like, okay, I'm cool. we're gonna do it in one. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, go. <laughs> so um, I think, like there's a one scene with me and my brother, and I think we only got to do that like twice. Um, so it was always different. It was depending on time, depending on what we had to roll. Well, we're going to have to wrap up soon for the next movie. So if there are any last questions, I see two. Are those two in the back, or are you all together? Was this, yeah. I'll repeat the question. Was this your uh, original idea to pitch them, or did they come to you with an idea for Wrong Turn 6 and you got the assignment? Uh, yeah, I know they, they, they came to me. I've worked with UFO before on some sci-fi channel movies, and uh, they came to me. But as far as story goes, it was, they, they had some parameters like the hotel that the three brothers needed to, to be back. But other than that, I kind of had free reign to present ideas. And between Fox and UFO, they, we kind of just honed it down to what you saw. So uh, yeah, I was encouraged to be as original as I could and come up with as much story as we could. I think that's something that they wanted to do different this time. Was the pool in the same location as the hotel? No, it was in a completely separate, different location from everything else. It was actually like right on the actual water. It was like a, a swimming facility. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I wasn't there either. And I never saw them swim at that pool. Yeah, I, just, I was like green screen. That was the only, that was I think the only time I had any green screen in it. You know when I like creepily am watching them sexily or something. <laughs> or another time I'm lurking. It was somewhere else, the hot springs. How many locations were there? Yeah, we really only had four total. We had the woods, we, yeah, the pool, and then the, the two different buildings, the military base, and then the, the Greek spa, the spa. Yeah. Oh, Thank you. Can I say what you If it was just the four of us, five of us, if you would have been there watching it, it wouldn't have been what it was. So our whole goal working with the writing team and all of the actors and all of the amazing crew team in Bulgaria was to just give fans something that they would want to come and see and then enjoy and want to talk about. Yeah. Yeah.